Hey Head Squeezers, I hope you're well. Mr. James May is taking part in a human cannonball experiment today. So once again, he's passed the baton over to me to answer some of your burning questions. Please do keep them coming in. They're brilliant uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on the comments below. The ones we're gonna to answer today are crackers. Uh, the three we've chosen are why polar bears don't live in the South Pole, uh, what causes harmony in a chorus, and also why do you get those nasty bags under your eyes? Good one, right? So the first one comes in on Twitter from at Sean Arkins 6 and he says, why don't polar bears live at the South Pole? So it's a great question, Sean. I mean, you think South Pole, Antarctica, snow, polar bears, right? Well, no. In fact, the furthest south that polar bears have been found to inhabit all year long is James Bay. Um, not James May, James Bay in Canada. So why don't they go any further south? Well, let's rewind the clock to 200,000 years ago when glaciers pretty much covered the whole of Eurasia. That's the landmass of Europe and Asia. And also the whole of the Arctic Ocean was frozen up. There wasn't much food and a group of pretty hardcore brown bears decides to venture north to try to find something to eat. Some of those managed to man up and deal with the cold and they evolved into the polar bears that we see now. So why don't they go any further south? Well, there's never been a landmass connecting all the way from the north to the south. And also, of course, nothing's completely frozen up. So those guys can swim, but they probably can't swim all the way to the South Pole. Bonus fact for you, um, polar bears eat stranded whales, they eat seals, but they will never eat a penguin. And that is because penguins will be only found at the South Pole, whereas Polar bears are only found at the North Pole. So forget all those Christmas cards that you've seen or TV ads that you've seen with polar bears and penguins together. It just doesn't happen. Okay, the next question comes on Facebook from Catherine Coffey, who says, what causes harmony when singing in a choir? Um, really interesting, slightly complicated, so let's break it down. Um, when Mr. James May gets fired out of that cannon, you are gonna be able to hear it because sound travels, sound moves, it propagates. Sound is basically a, just, just a form of energy made of vibrations. So when the cannon fires, it, it vibrates the air next to it, which then vibrates the air next to that, and the air next to that is just like a Mexican wave rippling through space until it hits your eardrum, sets that vibrating, and kicks off all the little mechanisms inside your ear that allows us to hear the sound. Now, sound is just a wave that's made of compression and decompression, compression and decompression. So, so it's where air molecules get closer together and then get further apart and get closer together. And if you plot that on a graph, what you get is this lovely sound wave, just the, the classic picture that you'd imagine of a sound wave. If there are more waves per second, if those waves are closer together, that's higher frequency, that's a higher note. So when they're really close together, that's a high note, and when they're really far apart, that's a low note, a lower pitch. So what about harmony? Well, harmonizing just means that the notes that are played sound good together, they sound lovely, and that's all down to that frequency. So if you play a piano or a saxophone or whatever, or even a guitar, if you imagine, as you move up the scale, so from low to higher and higher, each of those notes has a different frequency and has a higher pitch. And if you look at the waves for the lower notes and then a little bit higher and then even higher, you see that those waves get higher frequency, they get bunched together and that's why they're a higher pitch. Now, if we choose some notes that sound great, that harmonize together, so say we go for a C and an E, which is a first and a third, or we go for a C and a G, which is a first and a fifth. They sound lovely, they harmonize, and, and that is because their frequencies are related. Their frequencies are actually whole number multiples of each other. So when you play a chord, a first, a third, and a fifth, you're playing three frequencies that all sound good. If you play something really horrible like this, that sounds disgusting. That's, that's discordant. And that's because all the frequencies clash and they don't sound good together. So on to our last one. Um, this is from a comment that was posted below one of my videos before. This is from Zalistic. And Zalistic says, why do I get bags under my eyes when I'm tired? Um, and I'm posting this at 12.27, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> all right, man, I know how you feel. Um, now, every time you blink, your tear duct produces what's known as basal tears. So you blink and one of these tears is produced. Now, those basal tears are made of proteins and enzymes and mucus and all sorts of stuff to keep your eyeballs moist. When you're fast asleep, your eyes aren't blinking. 
but you're still producing those basal tears. Your, your tear ducts don't get the night off. So you have a lot of excess fluid. Now, if you pinch just underneath your eye, if you pinch there, that's actually the, the thinnest part of skin in your body. That's, that's about half a millimeter thick. Compare that to the palms of your hand or the soles of your feet, which are about eight times as thick. Now what happens is all that excess fluid starts to fill it up, just like if you're blowing up a balloon. That's exactly what happens, and that excess fluid fills up and you get puffy eyes. Bonus fact for you, um, that, that gungy stuff that you get in the morning, some people call it sleep, that's again that, that excess fluid gone all crusty. Attractive, right? Well, that is all the time we've got right now. Thank you so much for all your questions. We do read every single one, so please do tweet us, Facebook us, or put it in the comment below one of our YouTube videos, and we'll see you next time. Until then, happy head squeezing. Yeah.